The United States is celebrating the Pfizer vaccine, but one American is not happy. I'm talking about Donald Trump. The outgoing president of the United States has weaved a conspiracy theory around the vaccine. Trump says the vaccine announcement was delayed on purpose. What for? In a series of tweets, he's claimed that the U.S. Food and Federal Drug Administration did not want Donald Trump to have a vaccine win. So they came up with a vaccine five days later. Remember, we've been saying that Donald Trump is displaying all the symptoms of a sore loser. After blaming the electoral process, the mail-in ballot, the Democrats and the counters, Trump is now blaming the drug authorities. He says that Pfizer did not have the courage to announce a vaccine before the election. Trump's deputy Mike Pence jumped on board. He took credit for the vaccine and he thanked the quote-unquote public-private partnership forged by Donald Trump. The Trump administration wants to both blame the drug authorities, at the same time take credit for the vaccine. They're saying that the U.S. government gave money for the vaccine research. Now, Pfizer has rejected that claim. The company says it has an agreement to supply America with vials of the final vaccine, but it has received no advance payment for this. Meanwhile, President-elect Joe Biden's team is having a hard time kick-starting the transition process. The General Service Administration, or the GSA, which manages federal agencies, is not allowing Biden's team to proceed with the transition. It claims that there's been no, quote-unquote, ascertainment on an election winner. But the tally clearly hints at one. Biden, 290. Trump, 214. The winner needs 270 of the electoral college seats. Biden has crossed that mark and he's far ahead. And Trump, he's far behind. The transition authority does not want to recognize the numbers, though. It has withheld funding and access to security briefings and classified information. Something that is crucial to the transition process. The question is, can the GSA do this? According to American law, the transition process cannot formally begin until the head of the General Services Administration gives the green light. But the law does not clearly spell out when the GSA must act. The authority has a record of acting promptly during previous elections, with the exception of the year 2000. But 2020 is very different from the 2000 election, the one between George Bush and Al Gore. The numbers clearly favor Joe Biden, but the GSA clearly does not. Now, you'll not be surprised if I tell you that the head of this agency is a Trump appointee. Her name is Emily W. Murphy. She's among the many others who do not believe that Joe Biden has won the election. At a recent press conference, White House Press Secretary Kayleigh McEnany echoed the president's call for counting only what she calls legal votes. Our position is clear. We want to protect the franchise of the American people. We want an honest, accurate, lawful count. We want maximum sunlight. We want maximum transparency. We want every legal vote to be counted, and we want every illegal vote to be discarded. Does the Trump campaign have any evidence of voter fraud? Campaign attorney Rudy Giuliani has set up hotlines with the hope that some voters will report fraud. But the numbers have only been buzzing with prank calls. Take a look at this one. Calling to report some election, election interference. All right. What city are you? Uh, I'm in Arizona. You're in Arizona. All right. Can you describe the incident? Yeah. So there's an obese turtle that has rolled over onto its back and is. It's funny, but it's not. Meanwhile, uh, Trump's campaign has filed another lawsuit in Pennsylvania. It wants to stop the state from certifying Biden's victory. Pennsylvania's Attorney General called the lawsuit meritless. But that did not stop the U.S. Attorney General, William Barr, from allowing federal prosecutors to probe alleged irregularities in the presidential election. America's top crime prosecutor, Richard Pilger, resigned in protest. As predicted, Donald Trump is using every possible state machinery to overturn the result of this election. The question is, who is funding this legal battle? Some screenshots have emerged on social media of the Trump campaign threatening its donors to cough up cash. One particular email read, 
This is your final notice. So far, you've ignored all our emails asking you to join us in defending the election. You have ignored Team Trump, Eric, Lara, Dawn, the Vice President, and you've even ignored the President of the United States. Tens of thousands of patriots have stepped up for the very first time in the last 48 hours. Why haven't you? Here's another development. Donald Trump has fired U.S. Defense Secretary Mark Esper. The announcement was made on Twitter, as always, and there was no explanation given. Why does this move matter? It destabilizes an administration that is already stretched between Trump's refusal to concede and Biden's threat to move court over a blockade in the transition process. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi said the abrupt firing of Secretary Esper is disturbing evidence that President Trump is intent on using his final days in office to sow chaos in our American democracy. Was it not yesterday that we were talking about the possibility of Trump using his last days in office to sow trouble for Biden? To sum up in one line, here's what's happening in the U.S. The votes are still being counted. There is no official result. But there is a president-elect, and that is Joe Biden. And Donald Trump is not ready to concede. Thank you for watching Gravitas on Vion's YouTube channel. If you want to stay up to date with what's happening around the world, then subscribe to our channel and don't forget to like and share. Thank you very much for watching. Vion, world is one. Thank you.